Hello, uh, welcome to another episode. Uh, it is the Saturday, uh, the Saturday night before New Year's Eve. So it's like New Year's Eve, Eve. Um, well, I didn't make the rules. Um, so it could be a funny one tonight, might not be busy. Uh, out, but we're on the way to Stratford on Avon, uh, and we've stopped in at a little village called Norton Lindsay um, because the guys that run this, the new inn, uh, commented on our Facebook thing and said to come and see them. So on our way to our hotel in Stratford on Avon, we decided to uh, stop there. It's a lovely little village pub, uh, and after that drive, I can do with the swift half before we carry on to Stratford on Avon. Lovely little stop off, like lovely little uh, village pub stuff going in the corner. Several handfuls on the bar. Estrella, which makes me very, very happy. And a, a lovely, delightful little village pub with a nice looking little menu. And they're dog friendly. Hello, gorgeous. Yeah, good little first stop off. Uh, what a lovely village pub that is run by Danny, who's a Forest fan. Um, gave me some lovely beer mats, Forest beer mats and stuff as well. Um, well worth. Only 10 minutes drive from Stratford upon Avon. Lovely little village pub, lovely little village in general. Um, yeah, really happy that we uh, we decided to make a little detour and stop there for stop one of the day. So we've made it to Stratford upon Avon, and we're in this travel lodge just here, and pretty much just across the road is our first stop for Stratford Yard of Ale. Uh, and then the town is down there. It doesn't look like it's very far to walk, and everything uh, is pretty central. So it should be pretty easy going on the old legs today. Stop number one in Stratford anyway. Yard of Ale. Yeah, lovely feeling little pub. This uh, it's definitely a locals pub. Uh, feels it's big shrines to Aston Villa everywhere. Plenty of Villa memorabilia and stuff. Pool table. No penetration. No It's a good start. Good start for Stratford. Uh, after a ten-minute stroll down into the town, past the McDonald's and all the rest of it, comes to the top of town, uh, and our first stop down here uh, is going to be the One Elm. In we go. Was really nice. Uh, really, uh, Kim Boozer. Four real ale pumps on. Plenty of good choices on the uh, on the taps and stuff as well. And this day, yeah, a lovely, uh, very long and narrow, goes all the way down. A very nice, uh, a very nice pub. Very impressed over. Not only is it absolutely lovely inside with a lovely looking menu. There is this lovely courtyard area, and to make more space for the seating for drinkers and things like that, because it's all restaurant up one side. You've got this absolutely top looking heated barn. Lovely place. Walking further through the town, we've bypassed a couple because uh, there are different opening times on a few, and we found a late one called the Phoenix, which sounds like it's up until one. So we've gone past that for now, further down to the roundabout. So we've walked for about another, I don't know, six minutes or so from uh, the One Elm, which is, I'm so impressed with the One Elm, it's absolutely stunning. Um, the bar in the courtyard, the staff, it's just, just absolutely brilliant. That um, next stop is going to be this. Uh, it says Red Lion, I know it's a bit bright, you can't see it on the video necessarily. Uh, all their Christmas decks and things are, are very nice. Loads of lovely old buildings so far in Stratford. Um, everyone's been polite and friendly, uh, but it's a little pricey. But we expected that anyway, you know, you get what you pay for. So, uh, next stop, the Red Lion. And you still can't see it, but it does say Red Lion, trust me. Yeah, nice, uh, nice running pub. It's definitely an old pub. Low, low, low ceilings, like you can see, look. There you go, I'm touching the ceiling there. That's how, that's how low the ceilings are. So it's obviously an old pub. Very nice, it's a table table. Uh, so it's got a Premier Inn and stuff attached to it. Three hand pulls on on the bar up there. Um, and again, um, very spacious, nice looking old pub. Uh, with a bit further up. Decent though. Absolutely gutted. Uh, we can't Turn do this. Right towards the National barge Cycle Road and 41. Um, Deck. Looks like it's literally on the on the Avon. Uh, just looks beautiful. Uh, but it's all outside seating and they obviously uh, it's obviously weather dependent. So yeah, we can't do the barge and quarter deck, but it's fine because there are plenty of other pubs in this vicinity. So oh, well, onwards. Uh, what did I tell you? Plenty of pubs around. So literally, yeah, the barge is just there. Um, and just across the way. Uh, is the Encore, which says Waterside Dining on it. It is definitely a pub as well, though. Uh, looks a beautiful, massive, great building again. Uh, so, the Encore is going to be our next stop. Uh, and our little buddy Nick, you might remember him from the uh, Royal Leamington Spa video. Uh, he's on his way to join us. He was going to be here three hours ago, in classic Nick style. He's uh, very, very late. Uh, this is lovely. Feels very plush, very posh. Got the real ales on, neck all and stuff. But uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I look around. It's very smart dining area. Good sized bar. Really decent. Really friendly guest. 
yeah, very impressive on court. The staff are, uh, staff are on point. They're very polite. It's very nice in there. Definitely date night vibe somewhere. You could uh, you could go for a nice meal overlooking the... That's it. It's absolutely stunning, isn't it? Little Nick's with us, look. Oh, yeah. Here he is. <laughs> he's, he finally got here. Yeah. Uh, big old Luton fan that he is. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, this beautiful looking little establishment. Uh, just uh, a one minute's walk from the Encore. Uh, it's called Pen and Parchment. Uh, and that is our next stop for the night. So this is the first of six Green King pubs in uh, Stratford by Um You're always talking about death. It's like this, this is the morbid, this is the kind of morbid thing that I have to go with. They're talking, yeah, they're talking about death. Holly's starting a new job as a coroner's assistant and all that. So they're talking about death. So I figured I'd just occupy myself and talk to you. Uh, right, first of six Green King pubs in Stratford. Um, Laid back, subdued vibe. It's not quite in here. So those yeah. are nice old wooden beams. Of course, on a hand pole, you've got the old Green King classics. Green King IPA, oh, wow. Abba Ale. Um, you'd expect to find them in any Green King pub on a hand pole. So, so I should do. But it's a nice old boozer. So I'll have a wonder I'll leave, I'll leave the death talkers. Uh, Talk about inquests now. Inquests, inquests. Yeah. But yeah, a lovely, a lovely, beautiful looking old pub with the hand poles on. Nice quiet vibe. I'm just going to occupy myself for the day. Right, just across the uh, beautiful bridge, uh, across the Avon, uh, is... Uh, it looks like a hotel. It's also got a Bistro Pierre on the side of it, uh, but it's called The Bear. So this is our uh, this is our next stop along the way. Uh, Stratford, beautiful so far, though. Okay, so I think I got to the bottom of it. So the hotel is called the Swan's Nest Hotel. The Bear is the pub, and Bistro Pierre is the eatery. So three businesses kind of in one. Uh, it's no wonder it was so confusing on Google Maps. Yeah. So the pub is called the Bear. Um, got some. Sounds like says welcome to the Bear. So it must be the Bear. Uh, yeah. That's the bar area. Uh, yeah, confusing, but okay. I've got beer. So back over the bridge, uh, and you come to uh, Cox's Yard. Uh, it's literally just starting to rain as well, so I'm not up for getting wet, but. Uh, this, uh, it, again, it's right on the waterfront and it looks absolutely beautiful. So, uh, here we go. Very modern artisan looking uh, up, uh, the artisan pieces, burgers, dogs, all sorts. Football on. Uh, and uh, Forrest are actually winning. Uh, much to, much to yeah. Luton boys in North. Now look at this, like, so, uh, yeah. very nice looking craft beer bar. Plenty of craft beer and stuff. Uh, on the bar, uh, yeah, lovely spot, lovely gaffers. And they've got the sport on. So the mighty Forest uh, just uh, beat Manchester United 2-1. Uh, Mr. Luton's well happy about that fact. Uh, he's not. He really is not. He's really not, no. Uh, so we've wandered up. Uh, the rain has subsided ever so slightly. So we've made our way up. It looks like a bit of a high street uh, type place that we're on now. Lots of lots of bars and things potentially up here. And our next stop, 1940s cocktail bar. Nick should feel right at home in here with his people from the 1940s. To my rambling, it's uh, it is a 1940s cocktail bar, but it's called Officer's Mess. And the tea room next to it's called the Four T's. And there's a tea room next to it called the Four T's that uh, we'll probably find Nick in in about 10 minutes. 1940s themed cocktail. Uh, got uh, sadly got the theme going on. The, uh, the cocktail menu has got some interesting uh, choices and stuff on. There's no pina colada on here, but they're making me one. So we'll find out how wonderful that is in a minute. But some. Uh, some really good uh, cocktail off on the go. Looking forward to my pina colada. So we're sat on the other side, which is uh, it's just outside the tea room, well, but it's obviously part of the uh, thing. So all the tables are already booked. It's a beautiful little gaff this. Uh, it's, it's my pina colada. So. Uh, espresso. Oh wow. Oh well, that is superb. Yeah. I couldn't even do oh. Top marks on that pina colada. Very impressed with this place. Yeah, very impressed. Uh, I love a good 1940s cocktail bar. Look at this on the other side. It's like old, beautiful building. Stratford is full of these uh, places. So this is the second Green King of six. Apparently, let's have a big beer garden. The rain started again, by the way. So that's, uh, that's why we're, we're just sheltering. Because Smokey Joe here can't walk more than 10 yards without uh, having a cigarette. Um, to be fair, he did just pay over 30 quid for three cocktails. So I'm going to go in and get this round. <laughs> uh, yeah. But he does drive Arctic lorries and smuggles like people over from France all the time. So if you know anyone, so so if you know anyone that looks to get out of Romania, Poland, or anywhere else, hit me up and I'll put you in touch with little Nick. Unless you've got blood and cash, in which case I might consider it. Brown envelope, all right, right. Uh, rising, rising crown next. That's the Weatherspoons. Oh uh, no way! Apparently that beautiful building I was pointing out to was the Weatherspoons. It's the Weatherspoons. Guess we'll find that in a minute. It's the Weatherspoons. Uh, yeah, Rosen Crown, second Green King, 
Uh, ninth stop of the day, I think, so far. This is a humongous Green King pub. This has got some all over the gap as well. Like, I'm just saying around. Like, so we come all the way from, from down this end. This is a humongous Green King, but they've got a wonderful selection on the bar and stuff as well. Obviously, what you'd expect. But like I said, I'm well impressed to see the level head and the flint iron stuff on. Obviously, as usual, you've got your Abbott, your IPA, and stuff like that. Everything you would expect to find in a Green King. But it just goes on and on. This is a really good pub, this. Uh, I quite want to stay in and watch Luke Littler. So, I don't know, maybe we'll go, maybe we'll, maybe we'll stay. So that one, that one really is a top, top uh, Green King pub, that. It's definitely be a really good place to sit and watch the sport, the football, everything like that. Um, Got the got the darts on, so I was having a, having a nice walk, uh, nice walk across the road. Having having watched some of that, uh, but just across the road then is yeah. the Golden Bee, the Weatherspoons. So that beautiful building that I showed you a few minutes ago is a Weatherspoons. <laughs> Madness, isn't it? Madness, beautiful building. Weatherspoons is. In all honesty, it's not as impressive inside as it is from the outside. Um, it's, it's a long and narrow building, but yeah, there's not much. There's not much that feels historic in here. There's not much that looks beautiful. It's just the spoons. Yeah, it's long, spoons-like, and it's got spoons around. It is what it is. So uh, that was alright for a weather space, to be honest. Um, but. It's a, it's a letdown when you get inside because it looks beautiful from the outside. But speaking of buildings that look absolutely beautiful from the outside, so this is this is our third Green King uh, of the evening uh, called the. Um, absolutely beautiful one this. So Holly's now pointing out. The plague started here on the 11th of July, 1564. This is where the plague started, and I always thought it was in Luton. I always thought the plague started in Luton. The plague in Luton? No, in Nottingham. You take a picture of Luton. That's what he reckons. You take a picture of Luton. Oh, look at this. They reckon the plague started here. They reckon the plague started here. What better endorsement than to go in? So yeah, stunning pub is that. Quirky, alcoves, things like that. But yeah, so a, uh, a weaver's apprentice died in the basement, apparently, um, uh, from an unknown disease in uh, the year 1564. And that is where they believe the plague originated from. So we are stood in the birthplace of the plague. It's a lovely looking gaff, lovely looking boozer. Right. Oh, Rob's room, this is why not. Lovely like little square bar, all the stone floors, I love all this as well, but... Yeah, absolutely. Lovely looking little pub. There's another, uh, another sort of bar room and stuff through there. Look at the big, big old wooden door that with the metal bits on. I love, I love places like this. Small trek up the uh, road. <laughs> from there, uh, uh, again, some lovely, beautiful old buildings, old pubs, everything like that. Brings us to the keys, and it sounds to me like there might be a little bit of live music going on here. And you know, I love a little bit of live music. A bit of live music. Don't want to along. Some good live music in here. Good live music. It sounds good to me. So uh, I think it's stop. I think it's stop twelve or thirteen of the day. Uh, it's the keys and again. It's another another lovely old building. A little bit of live music. Love So, uh, out of there, we wanted to go into Queen's Head opposite, uh, but at 12, uh, sorry, 12, 10.25, uh, the doors are already locked and they're shut, even though there are people in there drinking. Um, we did knock, but nope, they're, uh, they're closed. Seems a very strange time on a Saturday to be closed, but around the corner, we have found a coach house. So uh, we're going to attempt it in here. Let's hope this one's open. Good feeling, pub, this. Uh, a little bit of live music going on over the other side, but uh, the main uh, the main draw for the room. Uh, yeah, modern... Uh, Modern feeling, modern feeling vibe, a little bit of live music, a little bit of darts, a little bit of mix, yeah, good mix of people here. What do you want, really? Um, and they're, they're still open at nearly 11 on a Saturday, which is what most pubs should be, really, surely. <laughs> yeah, try to get try to get into Queensland. It's really tight, because Queensland looks a nice pub, really sad we can't get in, but it is what it is. It is definitely an early closing place. The streets are, streets are deserted, and we're back up towards the town centre bit again now. Um, this is apparently still open until 12. Prospero Lounge, one of the lounge brands. Uh, they normally do stick their own house, so we're going to find out. Um, and then we've got the Phoenix, the place around the corner home till 12 or 1. Um, and then that'll be it, I think. So that'll be all we can do. Prospero Lounge. Well, yeah, they're open. It's a lounge brand, quirky paintings, lampshades, 
and the old yeah, the old lamb shows and things like that. It's uh, I like the lounge brands, uh, and at least they stick to their own house. So I walked back round to one of the ones we walked past earlier, which is the Phoenix, uh, which is going to be our last port of call for the night. I think um, it's definitely a, an early finishing town. It's only like quarter to midnight, and it's like it's, it's literally like a ghost town around here. Um, lovely town, but yeah, definitely not somewhere you are you're going to go and stay out drinking late on. Uh, yeah, but uh, it's our 16th of the day anyway. Not Nick's 16th, obviously, because it's several hours late, but you know, it's our 16th of the day. So, final stop of the night, the Phoenix. Nice sort of finish off, they are still serving, so. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, 15, 16 in one day, so it's a decent enough day. A uh, few handfuls on. I'm going for this. A, uh, a milk stout. A bit different. Uh, piano. Lovely looking, uh, lovely smart looking gaff. Probably they're open until one, but they did say the last one, so they're probably starting at 12. So yeah, it's definitely not a, not a late drinking town at all. Which is a real shame, because you could get around this town in one day. There's plenty here, but it just, you wouldn't be able to do it with the, with the closing tiles. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching guys. Uh, really appreciate it. Please do hit like, hit subscribe. Um, share the video out if you can. It really does help. We really do appreciate it all the time. Thanks for watching. Uh, New Year's Eve tomorrow, and we're off to Birmingham.